the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcome. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is dedicated to linear algebra students who are just stepping into their course. They've already gone through some review of linear systems and they've just been introduced to matrices and the size of a matrix. Those are kind of the two prerequisites to watching this video. So now that you've reviewed systems of linear equations and solutions of those and stuff like that, and you've probably reviewed, hopefully, what a matrix is, we're gonna glue those two concepts together and we are gonna glue them together into what's called a coefficient matrix and an augmented matrix. So a coefficient matrix, well, the matrix whose entries are the coefficients of the variable terms in a system of equations where each is in the general form, this right here, general form, by the way, you've learned, maybe you don't remember, but you learned the phrase general form way back when in your elementary algebra course. It's basically where all variable terms are on one side of the equation and all non-variable terms, which in this case is the B, are on the other side of the equation. So that equation there is in general form. Anyhow, each equation in our system is required to be in this general form. And if you collect all those coefficients into a matrix, that matrix is called the coefficient matrix to the related system. Let's go ahead and actually showcase what I mean by the coefficient matrix to the related system. Here we have a system of equations, just a simple two by two system here. And I want to write down the coefficient matrix for that system. Now remember, the coefficient matrix is just the collection or the matrix filled with the coefficients of the variable terms. What's very important here is that these are stacked into appropriate columns. That is, you have an X sub one column here and an X sub two column, and the variables that you see within your equations are aligned appropriately. If they're not, you have a little bit of pre-work to do. You want the X sub one column to only contain the variables X sub one and the X sub two column to only contain terms with X sub two. In this case, I already have it set up. So let's go ahead and write down what the coefficient matrix is for this system. Well, looking at the coefficients, and I'm gonna label my coefficient matrix capital A. I'll use my bracket here, like we did in the uh, previous video, which is we talked about what a matrix is and kind of the common notations. And what I'll do here is I'm gonna steal the coefficients, this coefficient of three, all right here, this coefficient of not just seven, but negative seven, I'll put right here, this coefficient of one, I'll write here, and the coefficient of positive one, I will write here. I hope you would agree that matrix just represents the collection of coefficients for this linear system. Note, that the first column contains the coefficients for the variable x1, the second column contains the coefficient for the variable x sub two. Now that should not blow your mind, hopefully it doesn't. If you're confused about that, we'll do one more example here. Now here is a linear system. It's actually what we would call an underdetermined linear system because we don't have enough equations to determine what x1, x2, x3, and x4 are. We only have two equations and we will need up to four. We know that from algebra, but we're gonna solidify that concept later on in this course. But the main reason why I wrote it this way is because I wanna force you to write things in aligned columns. So first thing you're gonna do is take this system of linear equations and rewrite them to where you have an x1 column and you have an X2 column. Let me go ahead and write that above. So we have an X1 column, we'll have an X2 column, an X3 column, and an X4 column. And then we'll also have a constant column as well, but we'll worry about that in a moment. In the first equation, uh, we have a negative X1. In the second equation, we don't actually have an X1, so I'll leave an empty spot there. 
in the first equation, we don't have an x2, so I'll leave an empty spot there, but we have a single x sub 2 in the second equation. In the first equation, we have a single x sub 3. And in the second equation, if I move this x sub 3 over via subtraction, I'll have a negative x sub 3 here. In the first equation, if you move this x sub 4 over to the left-hand side with subtraction, you get a minus x sub 4. And we already have a positive x sub 4 in the second equation. And finally, we leave the terms without variables on the left hand or on the right hand side. There we go. That's our linear system. It's equivalent. Both these uh, linear systems are equivalent. I've done nothing to really change the solution set. And therefore, once we write down the coefficient matrix, which I'll call this coefficient matrix B, just because I want to, we'll just steal the coefficients. So the coefficient of this guy right here is a negative one. I'll write that in. And the coefficient of x1 in the second equation is zero. The coefficient of x2 in the first equation is zero. The coefficient of x2 in the second equation is one. The coefficient of x3 in the first equation, one, and then negative one in the second equation, and so on and so forth down the line. Notice I did not include the negative two or the pi because those are not coefficients of the unknowns. Or you could say they are not terms that involve variables. So those are the coefficient matrices for those linear systems. You'll be working with coefficient matrices quite a bit in linear algebra, so it's probably a good idea to get used to that. Your instructor will ask you to write the coefficient matrix down for some type of system or whatever, and you'll be doing that throughout the course. But what about those constants? What about that negative two and that pi? I'd love to include that information in my, if you will, spreadsheet, right? But how do I include that in without somebody thinking that they're attached to variables? Well, then comes along the augmented matrix. The augmented matrix of a linear system is the matrix containing, well, the coefficient matrix of the linear system and an extra rightmost column consisting of the right hand sides to the equations that have been written in the general form, blah, 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 right? Basically, it's an extra column that contains the constant terms. But the weird thing here is if we go back a page and if you're walking room and, and somebody told you, hey, I'm gonna hand you this matrix right here. Good luck, have fun with it. How would you know whether that's a coefficient matrix or an augmented matrix where the last column represents the constants on the right hand side? You wouldn't know that. So there is a common notation that we use, although I have to be honest with you, the textbook that I use does not use this notation, but there is a common notation that is used to let somebody know that they've been handed a matrix, an augmented matrix that is, so that they know the first part of it is the coefficient matrix and the rightmost column is actually the column of constants on the right hand side of those equations. So this column would be appended to our matrix to be an augmented matrix or to create the augmented matrix. But how do you let somebody know that you've handed them an augmented matrix without verbally saying, oh, by the way, this is an augmented matrix? Well, the trick is this. If I hand you the matrix, one, zero, one, pi, and uh, let's say three, and two, one, one, negative one, five, or something like that, and I close it off, right now, you don't know if that's a coefficient matrix or an augmented matrix, but once I do the following, that's my way of telling you that's where the equal sign is in all my linear equations. And so that rightmost column is the augmentation column. That is the column of the right hand sides of those equations. And so this would be an augmented matrix. Now, as I said, the textbook that I use um, I've noticed that sometimes they use this notation, but often they don't. And I've seen it in other texts where they do not use the augmentation notation. And it's very sad. It's actually kind of frustrating. So I recommend to my students to always use an augmentation bar. That's what this is right here to really help you understand that you're working with an augmented matrix. Very, very important. 
So let's go ahead and go back to the problem we had, this guy right here. And this has already been cleaned up and put in general form for the, each of the uh, equations, the linear equations. But now let's go ahead and write that as an augmented matrix. And there's no need for me to do two examples here. One should suffice. So the augmented matrix for this linear system, negative one, zero, one, negative one. That's the coefficient. Actually, let me finish this out. Zero, one, negative one, one. So this right here, that's the coefficient matrix that we dealt with two pages ago. And now we're going to augment that with the right hand side. That is the augmented matrix for that linear system. Now, remember, when we had the coefficient matrix, the coefficient matrix had two rows and four columns. So two by four matrix. When you add an extra column, that is no longer a two by four matrix, it's a two by five matrix. That should make sense. You've just added a column. So that's the size of the augmented matrix in this case. Now, all of this is leading up to something very important, but I didn't want to actually burn time in this video for that. This video, again, is just to build all the mechanical stuff so that when you get to class, uh, your day one in the class or something like that, uh, that you have this easy material at your fingertips. So I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope you learned a little something and I hope to see you in a future video or in class if you're one of my students. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Don't talk too much. That isn't kosher. You may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry